I've done a lot of different sausage making on this channel over the years. I've done bologna, summer sausage, all kind of sausage, but I've never done hot dog wieners. Today I'm doing hot dog wieners from scratch. These will be skinless hot dogs and they're gonna taste like chili. It's a chili dog, but everything's inside the wiener. Gonna get started right now. The first step in this process is getting all your ingredients ready, have the proper amounts. And what I'm doing is somewhere around a six pound batch. I'm actually using a brisket half, the point half. It's got a lot of fat, a lot of lean meat also because the flat runs under the point. And I know you're probably saying, he's using a brisket on this. Let me tell you, brisket used to be a throwaway piece until Texas or somebody made it very popular. But I had this in the freezer and I'm gonna be using that to make hot dogs with. Hey, it's a brisket hot dog. That can't be a bad thing, right? So what I got here is I've got a seasoning from PS Seasoning. Let me tell you the proper name. It's called Chili Dog Seasoning. <laughs> The number on it, if you care to look at this on our website, is 158 slash B. 158 slash B. And they have two other hot dog seasonings that they carry as well. But I've got to break this down. This is enough for 25 pounds. And all I'm doing is somewhere just slightly over six pounds, I think is what this brisket half weighs. All right, so there is the brisket. This brisket comes from Porter Road. If y'all have not checked out Porter Road, check them out. This brisket weighs in at 6.22 pounds. So the first thing I gotta do is I've got to figure out how many grams that is. 6.22, that is a total of 28, 21.34 grams. So I'm going to write this down. Let me write meat up here at the top. Meat, 2,821.34. 34 grams. So we know how much the grams is on our meat. Now I've got to figure out how much of this seasoning I need for that amount of weight. So what I have here on this chili seasoning is uh, 13 ounces, or it's 369 grams total. So 6.25 pounds is what this brisket weighs which is right at a fourth of the 25 pounds that this seasoning would do. So I need, just for simplicity reasons, and I don't think it's that critical, we're talking very minute amount there, I'm gonna figure this at one fourth of this weight. So we've got a total, let's do this in grams, we've got a total of 369 grams, 369 divided by four, that gives me 92.25 grams. So that's how much seasoning I need. 92.25 grams of seasoning is what I need to weigh out. All right now for the cure, I need one fourth of the weight of that and it weighs in at 27 grams. 27 divided by four, I need one fourth of it equals six. 75, so I need 6.75 grams of this cure right here out of the 27 grams. And keep in mind that does 25 pounds, I need one fourth of it. I realize this could be a little boring for people that's not really into this, but for anyone, and that's really why I'm making this video, that's into sausage making or wants to get into it, they'll probably find this some key knowledge to have here. Now I'm using a erythorbate, and what this is, is a cure accelerator. What this allows you to do is once you get your cure in there and you add this and mix it all in, you can start cooking this right away. It's going to really, really speed up the curing process. Normally, if you just add the cure without that, you would have to wait at least 12 hours in your refrigerator before you could smoke it or however you're gonna cook it. We'll get into that a little later how I'm gonna cook it. So every ingredient is based on the overall weight of this meat here, which I know is 2,821.34 grams, all right? And I'm gonna do this, uh, a percentage of it, so I'm gonna go times 0.055% 
equals, I need 1.55 grams of this erythorbate. That's also grams. Everything I'm doing is in grams. To me, it's just more accurate. So we only got one more ingredient. That is the non-fat dry milk. And I'm going to add probably about 1.5%. You can start with 2% or under. And all, I, all that is, like I said, is a binder. It helps retain moisture. It gives it a really good finish. So I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to take Clear this out. I'm gonna start back with my 2821.34 grams of meat. We're gonna say times 1.5% on that. That's gonna give us 42 grams, 42.32. All right, so that's all of our measurements. That's everything I need to do. So now I just need to weigh all this out on my scale here and I have another scale and that's for doing the real light things, like the 6.75 grams or 1.55 grams. That's what you want for that. This one, I don't know if I'd trust those lower weights, but on heavier weights, you can definitely trust it. Got my brisket out here. I've actually already started cutting, and all I'm doing is cutting this down to cubes. You can compare a brisket point similar to the uh, pork butt as far as the amount of fat. It's going to give you, actually in this case, it's probably gonna give me about a 25% fat ratio, which is fine for making uh, hot dogs. You can even go up to 30%, no problem. I wanna give a good big shout out to Mike over there at Triple B Barbecue. He hooked me up with this cutting board that you're seeing here. This thing fits my table perfectly. He asked the dimensions I wanted. It's five foot by 24 inches. It's three quarters inch thick and he has a hookup with these boards. And uh, the next morning after we talked, the board was ready for pickup. So Derek went over here locally and picked it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish cubing this up. When I come back, I'll have my grinder in place and we'll go ahead and get this grinding. But once I cube it, I wanna put it back in the freezer and let it chill off a little bit and get a little firm. All right, I've got my grinder all set up. This is a three quarter horsepower grinder, which does fine for home use. I really like this, there's plenty of power. And as you can see, it's got frost all over. I had everything in the freezer that's removable from this grinder. You want it good and cold. I even have a jacket right here that keeps it cold for a while. And also the meat itself, I just took it out of the freezer. It's not frozen, but it's very cold. So we're gonna go ahead and start grinding. I like to get a few pieces down in the throat of this to where you don't start it dry. Kind of fill that up a little bit. Now we're gonna turn it on. And I'm just gonna feed it like chunk at a time and do this first grind. We will be grinding this three times. I'm starting off with a 10 millimeter plate on this. That's gonna be kind of a coarse grind. We'll work our way down. So let's go ahead and go power on. And here we go. Now I'm not gonna bore you through all this grinding. What you see right there is what it's gonna do until all this meat is gone. So I wanna go ahead and add just the seasoning to begin with. Just give this a good coverage. And we're just gonna mix all that in by hand. And the reason I'm adding that now is once I do my second and third grind on this, it's gonna really get that seasoning everywhere it should be. So we're just gonna do it by hand to begin with. All right, now before we go crazy, I'm gonna add in this non-fat dry milk, the binder. It's time for round two. I've got a one quarter inch plate in this now. And I'm gonna be adding like golf ball size pieces and just let it do its thing. Here we go. I can't stress enough about keeping this meat cold. That way you don't smear your fat. You just get a lot better grind on it. Grind number three coming up. And the plate I'm using is the 4.5 millimeter. Turn it on. And as always, you always start by dropping a little bit in there first. All three grinds are done. And I've got my mixing bowl for my stand mixer. And I'm hoping it will hold six pounds of meat. We're fixing to find out. It's gonna be a tight fit, I can tell you that. 
I think we're gonna make it, barely. Got a glass of ice water right here. And into that, I'm gonna add this sodium nitrite, this cure. And the only reason I add that to water is it will give it a better distribution into this. I've also got ice into this as well. Now one thing I wanna add is this is the sodium erythorbate. Go ahead, just put this across the top. Trust me, it's gonna get thoroughly mixed in. All right, so that's all the ingredients that goes in this. So let's lock it into our mixer. Lock it, we're just gonna start this at low speed to start with. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this water in here. I'm just gonna let it stay at low speed until I see it getting thoroughly mixed and then we're gonna start increasing this speed. Ultimately, you wanna end up with like a really thin meat paste to where it's almost pourable. And that's gonna require more water between the mixing, the water, the fat that's in the sausage, it's all gonna to come together. It's gonna to get totally emulsified. This is my 11 pound stuffer here, and it will hold all this no problem. Now it might be a challenge getting it in there because this stuff is gonna stick to my hands like crazy. Speaking of that, fourth set of gloves since I started this video. This thing is ice cold. You can see it sweating here. You wanna always keep everything very, very cold. So it ain't gonna stuff itself. So there ain't but one way to do it. That's just to get in here and get after it. As I said, this will be a scandalous sausage or hot dog wiener. So I'm using a cellulose casing that will be removed. Now smoke cannot penetrate this particular kind, but I think there is one company I know of for sure that has a cellulose casing that smoke can actually permeate, but this is not it. So we will not be smoking these. So that just slides on your horn there and I've got a knot tied in the end of it, and I just want to hang on to this real good at first. Let's go ahead and get us some sausage going here. Tell you what, let me get my meat here to the end first where I don't get a whole bunch of air in there. There we go, back off. Now we can slide it on there. And here we go. Give that a chance to get all the way to the end there first. Just fill it up. Now I've got a piece of blue tape down here at the end. That's gonna let me know when I get down to three foot, I'm doing it three foot long section, so I'll have increments of six inches each. There we go. And get us a knot there on that end. So I'm just gonna keep going. I'll bring you back on the next step. So I've already done five of these and I'm trying to get six, but that last one wasn't enough to get six. So what I do is I start off at six inches from here to here. I pinch just ahead of that. I'll put a twist in it. Then from there, you can measure the next one out and get a twist on that one. And just work it right on down until you get six. I've got my sous vide bath in place. It just came up to temperature. I'm using a Kitchen Boss uh, sous vide circulator, if you're wondering. And these are going to be buoyant. I already know this, especially this one because it's not a real super tight vacuum. Actually, none of them have a tight vacuum. We did what they call a loose vacuum. So I just wanna place this down here in the water. It's probably gonna float, it is. So we're going to place this one on top of that. And the way I'm going to submerge this, and that water's hot, is I'm just going to weight it down with some of these, with some of these uh, grinder parts here. We're just going to submerge these underwater, and if this don't work, I'll get more. But at any rate, we're going to submerge them under. Right now, one of them's under. All right, let's go ahead and try this one. It's going to float. Ooh, what it's hot. We're going to sink it down, and it's well up under there. All right, I'm going to find something else to sink this one down, 
and this thing is set for two hours at 145 degrees. And I'll see you back for the finished product. Then going for two full hours. And what I end up weighting this down with, or Derek did anyway, is a couple of plates and a platter. Let's get all this over here. So I've got the trusty Thermapro out and I just want to take and probe dead center and I am going through the plastic and we are plenty good. The internal on that is 142, 143. We are good. Speaking of instant read thermometers, if you're looking for a reliable, durable, does everything instant read or another thermometer, check out Thermapro. Right now, if you'll use my code SMOKERIZBARBECUE and use the link that's in the show notes or description box, you'll get 25% off. You're not gonna beat that anywhere. Let's go ahead and place these into an ice bath. We're gonna let these cool down about 15 minutes. Now I'll probably have to weight these down as well. Get these bad boys sunk. We'll see you back here 15, 20 minutes. Got them all cooled down. We took two of them out of their skins. And by the way, they popped right out of their skins. And from there, they went in the skillet. Actually, we had quite a few of them in the skillet just a minute ago. And everybody's been eating on these. They, they like it. They like it a lot. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm getting ready to. I'm going to make it two ways just for a taste. I'm gonna try it with just mustard to see how much of that chili flavor is coming through. Then I'm gonna try it with chili and mustard and the chili dog. And it'd be more like a double chili or a chili chili dog. So let me go over here and get some buns. I'll be right back. All right, so here's my buns. Let's take... Have you seen my wiener? As one dog to another. Oh well, luckily we got a lot of these. And I've got two more here. Let's go ahead and try this first one. Just on a bun, just with some mustard. If you like ketchup on dogs, hey, do you. There we go. Let's give her a try. Mmm. Ooh. That's good. Strong chili flavor. Not so much to me. Now Candace could definitely taste chili flavor. Tarina, she tasted a little bit. I'm tasting some. It's not like a chili dog. All right, let me get a dog on here, blow a little chili up on it. All right, so. A little bit of mustard, gotta have mustard on a chili dog. There we go. The texture is very good on these. It's very comparable to anything you'll get in a store. So you gotta ask yourself, is this worth doing? Making your own hot dogs? Probably not for your average person. You gotta be like me and a lot of people that really enjoy sausage making and it's more of, of the hobby part of it, the hobby aspect. Just creating it yourself and then getting the final result. And you could do this using your own seasonings. You could do it using PS seasoning. They actually have three different hot dog seasonings you can choose from. But for comparison, that right there, those hot dogs are uh, one dollar all day long at Walmart plus tax. And that, I guarantee you, it costs a lot more than one dollar. So more than anything, I just want to do this video, share it with you. Sometimes people just enjoy watching the process. You know, just that alone is satisfying. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I'm gonna get back to this hot dog before it gets cold. Until next time, I'm Russ Jones with Smokey Riz Barbecue.